in the uh, ancient world, there was usually a threefold division between body, soul, and spirit. And there was a difference between soul and spirit. This is actually very clear in the Greek form of the New Testament. In one of his uh, epistles, St. Paul talks about uh, a passage which in the authorized version is translated as the natural man knoweth not the things of the Spirit of God, but the spiritual man knoweth the things of the Spirit. The Greek for natural man is anthropos psychikos, psychic man, the soul man. And the, the Greek concept was the soul was a part of nature. Human beings had souls, but so did all animals and plants. Whereas the spirit was that which was to do with uh, the divine and, and the, the spiritual aspect. So there's a distinction between soul and spirit. And soul was a part of nature, just like anything else is part of nature, that's part of the natural order governed by natural laws. For the ancient Greeks, um, the soul was the animating principle of all living things. The earth, the universe... Uh, animals and plants and people. And the philosopher who developed ideas of the soul most clearly was Aristotle. He said that all plants have souls that organize their bodies. The soul is the form of the body. Uh, it's a kind of invisible mold that shapes the growing plant. Um, this was called the vegetative soul, the, plant, the, the, the soul that governs the growing form of plants. And the, how the souls work is by attraction. So the soul of an oak tree attracts the developing acorn and the seedling towards the mature form of the tree. Souls motivate by attraction. Animals also have what Aristotle called the vegetative soul. That's what shapes the growing embryo, uh, organizes the form of the body, and uh, helps maintain the body in health and helps regeneration of wounds and so forth. So this plant-like level of the soul is common to all organisms. Plants only have that kind of soul. Animals have that. But in addition, they have another kind of soul, the animal soul, which is concerned with organizing sensations, movements, and instincts. And of course, the Latin word animal comes from the Latin word for soul, anima. Animals are beings with souls. They're animate. So animals have the vegetative soul organizing their body and the animal soul organizing their sensations, movements, and behavior. Human beings have the vegetative soul organizing the body, the animal soul organizing our, the operation of our senses, our animal natures. And in addition, we have the intellectual soul, which is concerned with conscious thought, language, um, and um, the, the higher mental processes. Nobody imagined that the vegetative and the animal souls were conscious in the same sense. So the conventional, traditional view was that the intellectual soul, the rational soul, is embedded in a much larger psychic system which we share with animals and plants. And this was the standard view uh, in ancient Greece. It was incorporated into medieval theology by St. Thomas Aquinas, who uh, brought about a great synthesis of Aristotle's philosophy and Christian theology in the 13th century. And this became the standard doctrine taught in the European universities throughout the Middle Ages. So the human psyche, or soul, uh, was part of, it had these animal and plant-like aspects, as well as the intellectual soul, the rational mind. It was through the intellectual soul, or the rational mind, that uh, the human soul made contact with the divine spirit and with the whole spiritual realm. Well, this was um, the doctrine which was accepted more or less without question. Animals had souls, um, plants had souls, people had souls, the earth was alive. Um, as a living organism. Um, and uh, for the ancient Greeks, even magnets had souls. The very first of the pre-Socratic philosophers, Thales, has left only three fragments of his th philosophy. The first three fragments we have of Greek philosophy. Uh, one of those fragments says, the lodestone has a soul, the magnet has a soul. And so this is something that was taken for granted by the Greeks 
Um, and also, right up into the 17th century, it was assumed that the reason magnets could affect things at a distance was because they had a soul within them and around them. The soul wasn't just inside the body, it was around it as well. Um, and uh, magnetic souls were used to explain magnetic phenomena. And Gilbert, who was the